Hey, good morning, everybody. Today's date is August 24th, 2017, and my name is Leslie Williams. <laughs> this is going to be a very fast uh, video. It's a prediction video, and, and it could turn into a lawyer video. <coughs> if anything that I've described in any prediction video in the last 30 days and this video pertaining to predictions comes true. Now, my fellow American citizens, uh, as a result of being a gang stalking victim, as a result of this crime being cleverly managed and creatively executed either, either uh, and or directly or overtly around the target, okay, me, um, it is a crime that is extremely hard to prove. Now, in some aspects of gang stalking, believe it or not, things are easy to prove depending on what is brought about against the target. I, it's not an accident that you can go to Google and type in gang stalking, repeating words and phrases, then going back to Google and typing in gang stalking, repeating identical words and phrases around the target. This technique is part of the technique of sensitization tactics of gang stalking. All this can be Googled. Now, <coughs> in reference to how, if they're stupid enough to do this around a target who's wearing a tape recorder and has a video camera, a physical video camera, not, not a, the video uh, capabilities from your phone, if they're stupid enough to do this, then obviously the target is catching it on their tape recorder. Now, also understand as well, cyber surveillance is a methodology of gang stalking being exposed by tens of thousands of people all over America, including by also researchers and whistleblowers, including whistleblowers from intelligence agencies. So, it's all over the internet that cyber surveillance is an absolute method of gang stalking, which is even mentioned in the manifesto, a documentation file, that a manager of gang stalking, uh, gang stalking crews wrote offline, went to an internet cafe, and posted on the internet. That can be discovered and, and reviewed by going to Google and typing in a gang stalking tech, everything you need to know. Okay. Even though it's not everything you need to know. But in this manifesto, it flat out states, additionally, that monitoring all the targets, uh, electronic activity, okay, is, is a crime that they perpetrate against gang stalking victims. Now, why did I bring this up? As a result of the cyber surveillance and the in real time physical surveillance, okay, which can, can it absolutely encompass and include physical observation pertaining to how the targets responding to any harassment at all. Obviously, if they see me pulling out a tape recorder on a bus, okay, or in a library, or in front of police when I'm talking to them, and the fact that in all my evidence videos that are on the internet right now, it clearly shows me transferring evidence from the tape recorder to YouTube, to videos, and then to YouTube. It also, the hundreds of these videos also clearly show me stating that my tape recorder is running on me at all times. Therefore, the information extracted from that cyber surveillance, they can obviously deduce and conclude that I am behind, that I am taping all this evidence, meaning that they know I got it. So, if they see you're looking up law firms and lawyers online, they can obviously deduce that it's just a matter of time. If I find a lawyer, that this lawyer can scrutinize the evidence, including using an audio forensic specialist who can isolate all background noise in order to bring out more clearly the harassment, even though the majority of the harassment is clearly heard. Just turn me out. So, as a result of the cyber surveillance, they, which they engage in for at least two reasons, a threat assessment pertaining to if anything the target's doing is a threat to them, okay, or a benefit analysis if anything the target's doing can benefit them. Okay, so, and, and a great example of that would be if you look at, if they can see a target is placing an online order through Walmart for three items, okay, two of those items have already come in, okay, and the third one, as of right now, has not come in yet, okay, they give you a time frame to pick up any of the, uh, any of the items, the first item has to be picked up tomorrow, if the third item hasn't come in before I go down there tomorrow, that means I'll have to go back, now, you can go to Google and type in gang stalking at Walmarts, and you'll clearly be able to see that multiple victims across the country are exposing them through through YouTube and through their blogs. Yeah. So, I'm additionally bringing that prediction up as well. If anything happens concerning me, about me, around me, towards me, or against me, and or any of my property, bike, duffel bag, bike, uh, bike, duffel bag, backpack, and anything I'm carrying on my person, phone, cameras, tape recorder, wallet, anything, if any event happens towards me directly that causes a assault, robbery, okay, harassment, any type of physical direct altercation, 
accusations, complaints, or and or being banned from Walmart, okay, it will be directly connected to gang stalking. And when I say assaults, direct physical altercations, and robberies, that means along all travel routes getting to Walmart, walking routes, bike routes, bus stops, bus routes. I'm also being gang stalked absolutely and always have been on all MTS bus routes, uh, bus stops, trolley stations, and trolley routes. Now, I'm not the only uh, targeted individual in San Diego that is exposing MTS. If you extensively re review San Diego gang stalking MTS and or, and or Metropolitan Transportation Services, you will clearly conclude through the in-depth research okay, that multiple victims have exposed MTS's involvement in this crime. Does that encompass bus drivers as well? Now, fellow American citizens, MTS is a corporation just like any business is, just like any university is, just like the government is. All corporations care about is their bottom line, including the, the money generated from their criminal realities. I mean, I'm sorry, from their criminal expeditions, gang stalking. So, since gang stalking is correct, directly connected to hundreds of criminal motivations, which absolutely includes human trafficking, do you honestly think for one minute that a university, a library, a business, and any corporation which encompasses MTS will not engage in gang stalking methods in order to ban the target from the services they believe as a result of that, which also uh, creates absolute additional huge circumstances because the target can no longer be mobile, which can include prohibiting them from being able to get to lawyers. Okay. But also they believe as a result of the banning that um, uh, once you're banned from, from MTS, they know the gang stalking campaign will continue, which will then... Uh, which will be brought about every day around the target concern of the harassment, but also incrementally implemented periodic staged events, which then additionally cause results and effects. Those results and effects are designed to produce circumstances which then are monopolized on, keeping the target constantly tied up in these results, effects, and circumstances, which prohibits them from ever legally going after MTS. And if you only have a certain amount of time to sue the government, a business, including corporations like MTS, they know that that time is dis dissipating as a result of the target constantly, okay, dealing with and recovering from and reestablishing the effects from these events. Basically, what I'm saying is they're targeting your time. Absolutely. Just like UCSD did. Hold on. Okay. Because as time dissipates, that prohibits you, okay, from going after universities, libraries, and MTS services pertaining to the allotted time that you have to sue a place. Now, I know that you only got 120 days to sue the government, but I think you have at least up to at least a year or two to sue a business, okay, after criminality has been perpetrated against you. It could be longer, it could be shorter. I got to do a little bit more research concerning that. But basically what I'm saying is that MTS believes that once they ban you by staging a complaint, an accusation, and when they stage a complaint, a complaint or an accusation, or any type of physical event, they will stage the witnesses and they'll use the most innocent appearing people for it elderly people, even kids and teenagers, students, disabled people, veterans, they will literally use anybody for these events, literally. Th these descriptions can be Googled. Now, when you stage an event, blame it on the target, stage the witnesses, okay, when the police come, they'll always act like, well, we don't have time to listen to any evidence you got concerning this being a predicted event or considering that uh, you caught on hundreds of audio files, gang stalk and suck my dick being said on MTS bus routes and at bus stops. Okay, because they're told what to do before they even arrive on the scene because they know it's a staged event. They just come to play their role. MTS has the right to ban you. We can't do nothing for you. We ain't got time to listen to your evidence because we got another call. They will literally say because we got another call. They'll even play it out on their dispatch radios. I've seen it on, exposed by other targets. I've dealt with it myself. This is how gang stalking operates. Because what they have to do is try to make it appear that anything that's being brought about against the target is either happening for, because of the target's fault, they claim, and or that it's happening through normal apparent excuses, reasons, and mishaps. Case in point, SDPD used the same exact identical word for word, word for word, identical to a T excuse pertaining to while pe why people were harassing me at five different locations on five different dates. Oh, well, they're just no neighborhood troublemakers. SDSU police did the same thing. Or SD, the event that happened at SDSU did the same thing. 
they staged a witness and when they seen I was approaching an SDSU police officer on campus and, and pointed out the guy who threatened me and harassed me, the staged witness came and said, well, he was already harassing people on the trolley before she even got on. Because they got to make it appear that what's happening to your target is not specifically intended for that target by trying to paint the individual as being a punk and that he was harassing other people as well. You understand? So basically what they're doing is excusing the intent by misdirecting through misdirection. You understand how gang stalking works? Same concept. Whenever they stage an event, they will stage witnesses. I've seen kids being used in gang stalking. Google that. Okay. So as interesting as this sounds, and in a, in a sense pertaining to how complex that this is sound, sounds, but what you got to understand is that gang stalking crimes know they're committing a crime. So they got to operate in reference to being able to apply plausible deniability pertaining to an excuse, a legal excuse, pertaining to why things are being brought about. That way, in case anything in the future ever goes sideways for them, they can try and ex uh, create a reasonable doubt in the minds of any jurors or judge judges by applying a plausible deniable excuse pertaining to the event. This is where the stage witnesses come into play at and the co-op maggot police. Okay, so you really need to listen to what I'm saying. Staged events and gang stalking crimes are called street theaters. Absolutely, Google that term. In including Googling how they will stage the witnesses. Using literally any type of person for it. You think to yourself, if you're in a Walmart and a staged event is going on outside of Walmart or in Walmart or on an MTS bus route or bus stop or walking route to these places, okay, you got to remember that in gang stalking crimes, okay, uh, uh, I just lost my train of thought, so bear with me a second, okay? Um, what we have to understand is that they got to mask the stalking, which is tracking, GPS tracking of his target cell phone and covert physical surveillance. So they got to mask that, including by propping up people at places you're going to. They know you're going to as a result of the cyber surveillance pertaining to you placing a Walmart order. That way, when the event transpires, they can say, well, look at our video cameras on the wall. These people were already in here and, and, and already had a, a shopping cart full of purchases before you arrived. So how can they be stalking you? Do you understand how it works? Now, in gang stalking criminal expeditions, in order to apply plausible deniability in any environment, now I remember what I was going to say. They got to make it appear that also that the target is crazy. Now, how would they do that additionally? Using kids, a mother with her infant baby in a stroller, and get nice. A senior citizen who's walking with a walking cane. Yeah. Why would somebody like that be involved in gang stalking, Leslie? Are you crazy? You see what I'm saying? Because when an, any event's unfolding, they know the target is going to uh, uh, stick up for themselves. So they also got to make it appear in front of innocent civilians that might be in the area that the targets react inappropriately reacting, disproportionately reacting to an event that everybody that is around the target that played a role in the event is saying, wow, what's the matter with him? What's the matter with her? Do they have some type of issue? Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? By using the most innocent appearing people that physically appear that would not be involved in any type okay, of crime, kids. Teenagers, students, elderly people, disabled people, even veterans that are wearing veteran caps. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because dressing up an event, when you go to this manifesto, it's on the internet right now, you'll clearly be able to see that the person who wrote it stated that they are a manager of the bureau, because the syndicate is basically uh, compartmentalized into bureaus, the Bureau of Technology, pertaining to the individuals that engage in all the cyber hacking, the cyber monitoring, that's the Bureau of Technology. It's compartmentalized into different bureaus, and each bureau takes care of a specific part of the gang stalking crimes. The Bureau of Travel, people in the travel industry, bus drivers, okay, bus services, okay. The doctors are called the money bags because they generate so much money for the syndicate through insurance fraud. Absolutely. Okay. Well, the person who wrote the manifesto states that their their part of the syndicate is responsible for the uh, the scripting and execution. Now, what does that mean? And briefly, it and, and she goes on to state that they have individuals that are called playwrights. They they write out what's going to be played out, 
and then they had the spy on to spy on the target, which can encompass members of the Bureau of Technology. Okay, so they know where the target's at, so then what is written out to be played out can be executed. And remember what I said, her, her role in, this, in the syndicate is the scripting, the scripting of the event, and the execution of it. Then Sam. So, when I make these videos, I'm, I'm, I'm deconstructing, through the details of what I state, I'm deconstructing how gang stalking operates, and gang stalking operates through a constructed, okay, operation, a template of behaviors, methods, tactics, techniques, and maneuvers. All of it brought about through the covert physical surveillance and technological surveillance, GPS tracking the target cell phone. Okay, and let me give you another tidbit of information. Go to Google and type in how they're hacking into target cell phones and use them as microphones. So they can hear anything a target states, if, like say if a target is making predictions in their tape recorder as they're walking to a bus stop. Let's see if gang stalk and suck my dick is caught being said on my tape recorder in the next two weeks, especially in the next seven days. Now, they, if, if, if I'm walking down the street and they're using a target cell phone as a microphone, even when the phone is turned off, Google that, they can clearly hear a person saying these things. Okay, so they can extract that information and say, well, we better not do this because we want to make sure that what she's predicting doesn't come about. In fact, they'll even do the opposite to make it appear that what the target is predicting sounds crazy. Literally. 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 Okay. And or they will literally play out what the target predicts because possibly they might be trying to use a target during a staged event in order to sacrifice somebody that they're using as a result of a middleman using them. Meaning that this person being used might not even know that what they're doing is gang stalking, might not even know that the police are connected to it, or that the business is connected to it. Because they're not only targeting the target, but they're also targeting some of the people they're using. Absolutely. So my fellow American citizens, let's see if I'm arrested, ticketed for illegal lodging, trespassing, and encroachment in the next two weeks. Let's see if I'm banned from any library, business, bonds, Regents Road in Arabia Street, La Jolla, California and any MTS service at all. That includes stage events at MTS bus stops, on my way to the bus stop, any bus route, any trolley station, any trolley route, all walking routes, libraries, the North University San Diego Public Library, Bonds Grocery Store on, on Regents Road in Redby Street, and the Bonds Grocery Store, or any business in the plaza that is off of Governor Road in Genesee Avenue, which is in University City, and border lines between that location one block away is a hoy. Okay. Now, and that includes gang stalk, suck dick, suck my dick, oh my god, stalk, stalker, being caught on my tape recorder. Anywhere I go, especially MTS bus routes and bus stops. My goal right now is to catch MTS, indisputably catch them by predicting what these little maggots are going to do before I get anywhere. They're propping up assholes at bus stops, okay, to gaslight me, to try and provoke me to react verbally so they can then wave down a bus driver and complain to him. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you can also research how gang stalking will let you know you're being gang stalked by and through repeating certain physical gestures around you as well. It's their way to let you know this person standing here, standing here because of gang stalking. And when you look at some of the type of people that are used in gang stalking crimes, okay, it's it's done to psychologically intimidate you because of the way they look, how big they are, the way they're dressed, or maybe they might be acting physically. Absolutely. I gotta go. San Diego, California. This is a two-week video prediction, but it especially applies for the next week. Thank you for listening, everybody, and have a great day.